Okay, we we're recording. All right, so for those that are not aware of the situation leading up to the international, I'm going to give a brief, a brief, a brief preview of the story kind of leading up to this. So before everything started, the, um, the Valve invited, I think it was like six or eight teams directly into the international. They for sure are playing. Um, then there were the qualifiers, North America, Southeast Asia, China, and Europe. And in those qualifiers, teams had to play through a grueling tournament to try and qualify to get into the international. The first place for each of those tournaments got invited directly in, so we're going to see them for sure. The second place teams, all that had come to Seattle in this last week, had to play in the wild card tournament, and only two of the four teams actually get to move forward. So already, two teams are in Seattle and have already been eliminated before we even went there. Um, so, there are now 16 teams in the tournament, and they got broken up into two groups, two groups of eight, and those groups all had to play each other twice, and if you won both games, you got three points. If you won one game and you each tied, then you each get one point, and if you lose both games, you get no points. <coughs> those games have been played once again last week, and so they have filled, filled the brackets out, and now that's what we're going to go watch in Seattle, is watch them play through all the brackets. But there's two big storylines leading into the international. So yeah. first off, there's the Cinderella story, all right? Um, in the qualifiers, um, in the Chinese qualifiers, there's a team called C-Deck, C-D-E-C, -E um, that it qualified for the second place, the wild card spot. They, they won the wild card. They got directly into the group then, but they still had to play those seven other teams. And they, everyone expected them to do well-ish, but they didn't expect them to probably go in the top four. Well, not only did they do well, they finished, I think it was like second in their group, just annihilating team after team and just playing phenomenally. So now there's this big Cinderella story building up for them that they've worked their way through the qualifiers, got through the wild, wild card, through the group stage, they're now in the, the winner's bracket and are looking to try and secure a really high level spot or maybe even the tournament is kind of what their goal is, which is really, really crazy to see. So that's awesome. But the biggest storyline that I'm the most excited about is two teams. Um, for those of you that aren't as up on esports in general, America has always been the redheaded stepchild of esports, right? Think back seven, eight years ago in soccer, when we tried to like compete at the World Cup and such, and everyone was like, oh America, you play good soccer, yes, yes you can play. Also it's not called soccer, you morons. <laughs> and we're out there like, we can kick the football, I mean soccer ball, and we're just awful, and it just, it just didn't work, right? Well, that's us in esports, and it has been for like the last almost decade or so. Every esport, not just Dota, we have not been able to compete in the world stage. Well, this year, there's a team called Evil Geniuses, EG, who have some of the most amazing team composition I've ever seen that are just destroying people and are one of the favorites to win the tournament. Um, so, that's one team I want to talk about. The other team is Team Secret. Um, that's a team that was built about, I don't know, half a year, eight months ago from some phenomenal players from other teams and they formed this team and really started wrecking people and they've been doing phenomenally as well. So this whole storyline starts about six months ago at the Dota Asian Championships, that DAC, that's like the international for Asia. The prize pool is around, was around like three, three and a half million dollars, still a lot of money not the 17 and 0.8 that the international is, but still, um, it, it's kind of the, the big prequel for the international, right? So, both those teams were going there. However, before the tournament started, shenanigans already happened. They posted the teams that were at the event right on the website, but they didn't post their rosters right away. And people were wondering what's going on. Somebody got into the HTML code and saw that some of the players from EG were listed under Team Secret. And so people are like, wait, what now? Did they seriously trade teams? And sure enough, two players, two really prominent players from EG, traded over to Team Secret right before the tournament. And so they replaced them with two other players. 
So now there's already this kind of grudge match, right? That you already have this division between the two teams. You want to beat your old team. Um, Arteezy and was it Zai. Zai moved from EG. Arteezy was kind of the the young prodigy, prodigy of Dota for a long time. He was a young Dota player for a long time. He was picked up by EG. There was a guy named Fear who was the captain of EG. He's one of the old, really good veterans in the game. In the uh, in the documentary we watched, he was the American in the documentary. And back then they were calling him old. Five years ago they were calling him old. Now he's fucking Grandpa Dota, right? <laughs> but he's so calm and collected. He's a great mentor and a great leader, and still a great player. So anyway. He, he took Arteezy and trained him and molded him, and they called him kind of, you know, father and son thing going on there. And they saw this great camaraderie where even when they face each other in games, Arteezy will be like, good luck, Dad, and he's like, good luck, son. Like, it's really cool, right? So anyway, the DAC happens, and he, those you guys from EG move to Team Secret. So now EG fills up their spots um, with, uh, obviously, Sumail, who's the other guy? Sumail, I forget. Uh, Sumail. Love you. Universe? No. I don't know. In any case, EG... Kuroki, maybe, is it? Maybe Kuroki. EG fills up their two spots with two new guys. One of them is called Sumail. This kid, and I'm not joking when I say kid, is 14 years old, okay? They now have one of the youngest Dota players and one of the oldest Dota players on the same team. Fucking amazing, right? So now, it's DAC, the Dota Asian Championships. This 14-year-old is playing in his first major tournament ever with his idols, against his idols, in a foreign fucking country, not just like kind of foreign, it's Asia, and he's playing for a million and a half dollars. No pressure, no pressure, guys, right? The whole tournament, they're watching this 14-year-old kid fuck people in the face over and over again, and the casters, the players, they can't believe how good this 14-year-old is. It's just mind-boggling, right? Anyway, at the semifinals, EG and Secret finally meet. Secret, uh, sorry, but before the brackets happened, they had the group stage. Every team had to play every other team. Secret, the team that was formed by those other teams, played every other team and never dropped a game. They finished 15 and zero, which was just ridiculous, right? So people really thought they were gonna win. So Secret EG meet in the semifinals and EG knocks Secret down. So, already the grudge match is starting. EG actually gets knocked out by a Chinese team called VG, and they take third. So they, they started with a stellar performance, but couldn't quite finish. And so Seeker goes on to face the Chinese team. It's a best of five. They win the first two games really handily. And in the third game, you can tell that the, the Chinese team laser focus on Sumail. They okay, think you got your team's best up. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. I you're, you're saying secret. secret. And oh, sorry, sorry. It, it, it's EEG and and uh, the Chinese team VG. Not secret's been knocked out, and they took third. So EG is in the finals against VG, and they laser focus on Sumail, and they think if they can if they can make this 14 year old kid crack, that's the that, that's the secret to beating EG, right? <laughs> so they so they right away, 20 seconds into the game, they kill him. He comes back a minute later, they kill him. He comes back and, and they just keep killing him. Within five minutes, he has the most deaths of anyone in the entire tournament. And at that point, even the casters are like, how is this kid not under his desk crying right now? I'm about ready to cry. Holy shit. I, I, for a full grown adult, this is ridiculous. This 14 year old kid is gonna fucking kill himself, right? Not only does he not cry and, and piss himself, he plays smart, he plays collected, and you can tell Fear is pulling him back and saying, dude, we got this. We have your back, you've carried us this far, we fucking got you. And he, and not only does he not, does he not fail, he goes from the most deaths in five minutes to the second most kills of anyone in the entire tournament in 10 minutes. And then they have no answer for him. He has a one-man fucking wrecking crew and just destroys their team over and over again. And you can just tell the way he's playing, that he's just thinking, you fucking like those first five minutes, you bitches? What now? What, I'm 14, I haven't even hit puberty yet. And they win the tournament and he wins one and a half million dollars. First tournament. So that's how this starts. 
And then for the next six months, these teams keep hitting head to head for first and second place over and over again for a while. Yeah. EG, uh, EG and Secret. Se Secret. Yeah, EG Secret got third, but they yeah they, they got third. Back. Yeah, and, 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 but, but they, they had this problem. For several tournaments, they kept coming in second. They couldn't quite finish a tournament in the first. Then finally, about four months ago, um, at a, on an online tournament that EG wasn't actually at, they took first, and they kind of they popped their cherry. And then they were almost unstoppable. They won tournament after tournament. EG knocked them down once, but in the last, like, six times they've met, Secrets won four, EG's won two. And coming into this tournament, Secret, in, into the International, is on a four tournament win streak, which is almost unheard of. The last time this happened was when Na'Vi, I think, won in 2012 or something. So this has like unprecedented amounts of ridiculous, amazing gameplay between these two teams building up into the International. And once again, there's this big rivalry between the Asian side of things, China and Asia and all, and all that, that region. Both China and Asia? China and Asia, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and East Asia, and, and, and then the West side, West side, um, all the Asians, and, and then the Western teams, Europe, America, um, there's this big clash. You guys saw it once again in the documentary, they talked about China. It's like kind of like StarCraft, Korea versus the world. And Europe teams have come back and beaten them back and forth. But this is the first time in a long time these two Western teams, EG is American, Secrets European, have just dominated the Chinese teams. I mean, just utterly. However, there's two teams once again that are that are coming out of the woodwork here. That that's, that that C deck team, that, that 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 Cinderella story. Everyone's wondering if they can take down one of these giants. And there's another team called LGD. The champions last year, newbie, won because they were champions. Go figure. And this year, they barely, they got invited to the tournament, and they're like last place. One of the big reasons is their captain, Zhao Wei, left and joined LGD. And now LGD, I think tied with, with, uh, with Secret Region, yeah. and they're one of the best teams right now in the tournament. And Zhao Wei was the main reason they won last year. Everyone's fucking aware. So that's another, so they have two Chinese powerhouses that, that were kind of in the wings and now are coming out to play and these two Western teams and to see these guys clash is going to be utterly amazing. And once again, the tournament so far has played through a lot of the, the group stage stuff leading to the, the brackets. This year is more action packed already than all of last year combined. The first day of the group stage, um, you know, you, there's an item called Divine Rapier. It's a really high risk, high reward item. It does stupid amounts of damage, but it's really expensive, and if you die, you drop it, and anyone can pick it up. So it's really high risk, high reward. In the first day of the tournament, they bought more Divine Rapiers than all of last year's tournament. Is which team or all? I mean, all the games combined. Okay. On, on just the first day. Because that's how action-packed these games are. Freaking Mushi with two Divine Rapiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there, there was a player that bought two Divine Rapiers. He put them in his base. He didn't have them on him. They didn't know he had them. He fought in a really pivotal fight, died, probably on purpose. He bought back into the game, grabbed both Divine <laughs> Rapiers they didn't know he had, teleported back into the enemy base, and who's going to check as he teleports in? I wonder if he has two Divine Rapiers all of a sudden. <laughs> he and, just back. And he, and he literally arrives and just, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, base is over. Uh -huh. And the other team, as they're dead, are like, <laughs> you've, got, you've got to be kidding me. Did he fucking hack the game? So many amazing plays. Ben was fairly certain within the first day one of the casters was going to lose his fucking voice. Yeah. That's how action happened. Long periods of time. <laughs> That's how action-packed these games are. And that and these games aren't even the elimination games yet. These are just placements for the brackets. When we start watching on Monday, it's gonna be for fucking keeps. These teams are playing for millions of dollars and for getting eliminated and losing out on millions of dollars. This is going to be fucking amazing. So there's the story leading into the tournament. This is gonna be nuts. So if you're not if you're not hyped yet, I don't fucking know what to tell you. <laughs> nice! See you guys later.